What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we are going to be making a small water gun. I didn't have a lot of time this weekend, so I thought a small water gun would be a perfect model to create for this week. Now when it comes to those textures, we are going to be approaching things differently, but we will go over that later on when the texturing starts. But for now, we need to start blocking out our water gun. Now, as a lot of you may know, a lot of social networks out there don't like guns or weapons on their social networks. So I did some Googling trying to find the least gun-like water gun I could find. And one of the water guns I came across was of this image. And I really like this whole space alien laser gun look to it, especially the green. So I thought this would be a great model to try and recreate. So without further ado, let's get started. So to start this one off, we are going to insert a sphere and we can start blocking out those main shapes. I thought a sphere would be fitting so we can simply just scale out that sphere and kind of give it that longer shape that the top of this water gun has. And then for the handle, I can select those bottom faces and simply just extrude them outwards and we can slowly start giving this water gun some shape. All right, so now that that handle is blocked out, we can move on to the front where the little tiny barrel is. And I'm just gonna simply just extrude those faces to make it a little bit longer. And if you look at that reference, they have those basically cylinders that kind of are extruded near the tip, that laser gun sci-fi look. And what we're gonna do for that is just simply add a few edge loops and I can select those faces and extrude them outwards to create a similar shape. All right, so next up is creating the trigger, or better yet, the hole that the trigger is gonna come out of. So all I'm gonna do for this is using my multi-cut tool, I can create a small little circle where that trigger hole is gonna go, and then I can delete those faces and extrude that edge to give it some shape. And then later on when I smooth out this object by hitting three on my keyboard, this square shape is gonna look more rounded and it's gonna look more accurate to my reference. All right, so now that my trigger hole is created, I can start working on those inside objects. Now it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see through this material and I obviously wanna keep this gun in the scene that way I can see how large I need these inside shapes to be. So we're just gonna add a different material to this outside shell and I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent so I can see through it. This is just gonna make my life much easier when I start building these objects. Now I found this really great reference photo on Google Images showing how those inside components work on a basic handgun water gun. So this is what we're gonna use as our reference and we're basically gonna recreate shapes similar to this. Now I'm gonna keep this extremely straightforward because they're inside and you're not gonna really see these shapes that much. They're basically there just to fill up that empty space and when we add that cool texture on this outside plastic, you're just gonna see through it and see basically the silhouette of these objects. So I don't need to worry about detail, I just need to fill in these objects similar to my reference photo. So I'm basically just gonna do this with a bunch of different cylinders and we can build up these shapes. All right, so that's basically all of those main inside shapes. Now, I just need to add a tiny tip to this water gun where the hose or the inside little hose is gonna be attached to. So once again, adding another cylinder, we can shrink that down and fit that right at the tip of my gun. And then for the hose part, I'm just gonna do this with an EP curve tool so I can draw out the curve and I can simply turn that into a sweep mesh. That way I can just control this line afterwards and I don't need to worry about getting everything perfect right off the start. I can just quickly draw in a line and then customize it as we go. And to be honest, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the gun is seeing through it and seeing this tiny little hose. I don't know why, but it just looks cool. All right, so now that our hose is looking good, next up is that tiny little trigger. And you probably guessed it, we're gonna start off with another cylinder. We can scale that down and block out a tiny trigger for my water gun. All right, so now that we have all of the main shapes in the scene, now we can start playing around with them a bit to make them fit together a bit better. I find seeing all the objects beside one another really helps visualize how things are coming together. And at least for myself, it helps me piece together this water gun or any object for that matter a lot easier. All right, so things are slowly coming together. Next up is adding that hole on the top of the water gun where that plug sits. Basically where you fill up the water to fill up the water gun. Now, originally I was just gonna add a small cylinder, low polys and boolean out a hole. But I thought it'd be cool to add that graphic, that little, whatever that symbol is on the side of the water gun in my reference. I thought it'd be cool to add that into the geometry. 
Now, to be honest, looking back, this was completely unnecessary. I could have easily gotten away just adding this into the material by adding a bump map, which we will do during out the texturing process. I will add other details that way. But I thought for some reason at this moment, it would be cool adding it into the geometry. So I'm going to save the Boolean until I add. Basically, I'm just going to smooth this object at once to add some more polys. And then I can add that tiny little detail on the side using that multi cut tool. I can just create that symbol basically and then select all those faces and extrude it outwards. And then after I add all those extra polys, then I can Boolean it out. And the only reason why I'm waiting to do the Boolean until after I add the polys is it's just gonna look better. I'm gonna have more polys to work with. So when I do that Boolean, I can go in with my multi-cut and target well tool and attach those vertices. And there's just gonna be more polys to work with. So let's go ahead and add this tiny little detail and then we can Boolean out that hole for the plug. And then once I add that boolean, of course we need to go in with that target weld tool and just weld together all those random vertices that are sitting on the outside edges. And then using that multi-cut tool, I can attach all the other ones that I need to attach. All right, so now we need to make a plug for our hole. So once again, I'm going to start with a cylinder and I can block out a tiny little cap to fit inside this hole. Now I decided to split this plug into two parts, I don't really know why, but I decided to make a cylinder for the main top shape that fills in the hole, and then another cylinder for the long little stem that sticks out on the bottom. And to be honest, I love this little plug, it adds so much fun detail for some reason, it just reminds me of being a kid. All these plugs are always the same for all of these water guns, and, and I thought it'd be really cool seeing part of it on the inside when you add that transparent material to the outside plastic. And just like that, our tiny little water gun plug is created, and we can move on to some more detail. All right, so one of the first things I wanted to add was the very tip nozzle. There's no hole going in and it's basically just plugged right now. No water would be able to come out. So we're just gonna simply extrude in a tiny hole, not too deep, that way it just looks like water can come out of it. All right, so if you look at the reference photo, you can see in all of these corners and as well as where those inside components are sitting, there's these long cylinders that basically help hold these pieces in place. I'm assuming they're part of the plastic from the outside shell that just is kind of molded together to help hold those pieces. So what we're gonna do is just add some simple cylinders to act as those plastic pieces. And hopefully once we add that transparency to the outside, it's gonna make it look a bit more realistic, like there's more inside components. And we don't actually have to attach these cylinders to anything in reality. They're just going to be floating there, but we're just going to fake it because you're not going to see that detail with that outside material, that transparent plastic. It's just more or less going to be a silhouette that's going to act as that shape or that detail on the inside. Now for these outside ones that sit on the corners, we are going to do this a little bit differently. I can't simply just add cylinders because they're going to be poking out the outside and there's a really nice curve to my plastic where the handle is and to the top shape. So what we're gonna do is just enlarge one of those cylinders and we're gonna fit it roughly in that position. And what we're gonna do instead of a normal Boolean, we are going to make a slice. That way I'm going to use that shell shape to make a cutout roughly where it would intersect with my cylinder. And then I can easily just chop off the outside shapes and hopefully it's gonna sit nicely on the inside like it's basically a part of that plastic and it's not gonna be poking out the outside. And like any other Boolean, slice is basically the exact same. Once that slice is created and I delete those faces, I need to go in with that target weld tool to clean things up and then use that multi-cut tool to attach any other vertices that I need. And then I can just basically bridge together all of these edges to seal it off. And then I'm gonna select those outside edges and add a very tiny bevel. So when I hit three on my keyboard, it smooths out properly and it'll fit nicely on the inside of my handle. And hopefully this is gonna look like one of those plastic pieces that are just on the inside that's basically molded to this outside shell. All right, so now that everything is basically done, I'm just gonna go back to those inside shapes and add some nice bevels to all of those edges, and then I can smooth them all out to make them nice and round and not look low in polys. And then for that tiny little plug on the very top, I'm just gonna give it a tiny little bit of a bend. I feel like if you open and closed it a bunch of times, it would slightly bend the plastic. It wouldn't look so straight and perfect. I'm also gonna to go to the very tip, the nozzle, and I'm just gonna extrude some of those outside edges to sit on the inside of the plastic. That way it looks like it just held together a little bit better than just kind of floating there, not really attached to anything. And then I thought just before we wrapped up all of the modeling, I should add one more tiny detail, and that's a very small smiley sticker that just sits on the side of the plastic. 
I wanted to add something very tiny that just made it look a little bit more interesting to look at and I thought a small smiley sticker would just be very fitting. So all I'm going to do is just add a cylinder, chop off all the sides so I have a nice circle for that circle sticker and then I can position that on the side of my gun. And I decided to position it near the back so I was hoping to have the main render from the side and there's no objects on the inside and near the back of the gun so I thought the sticker would be nice there so it wouldn't be covering any of the inside components. And of course decided to peel up some of the sticker so it's not perfectly flat because a sticker with a wet water gun just I feel like it wouldn't last that long so I thought it would be a little bit more realistic to make it kind of peeled up on one side. Alright so that's basically everything for the 3D modeling so I'm really quickly going to show you exactly how I did those UVs and how I prepared the model for Substance and then we can jump into Painter and start adding those textures. Now I know I went a little bit quick throughout this whole modeling process because it was fairly straightforward but what I decided to do was do the texturing part more real time since it's not really going to take that long but we're going to do things a lot differently than we usually do on the channel. Alright so here is the model in its finished form. Now what I decided to do was two different textures, two groups for the two different textures applied. So I have the insides and I have the outside shell. Now once again this whole detail on the very side was completely unnecessary. To be honest I could have kept this thing much lower in polys and then just added this little graphic on the outside using just like a bump map or a height channel in Substance Painter. But I just decided for fun just to add it into the geometry because that's always fun to do. But what I did do was just leave a low poly version here so you can see how much lower in polys I could have had it and I could have just textured something like this. Now of course I just smoothed this out to have some nice you know edges. This isn't used in a video game or anything like that. I just wanted to have a nice little fun render. But I just wanted to quickly point that out because it's like I said it's just unnecessary and it adds a lot of unnecessary polys to the scene. Now back to the UVs. So what I decided to do, like I said, was two groups for the two different textures. So I have the outside shell, which is pretty straightforward. It's just, it consists of the shell itself. And I just decided to do one cut right down the middle since you're basically not going to see the front that much or the back and you're not really gonna see a seam in that material. So I thought this right down the middle was fitting. Now I also decided to add these tiny little plastic pieces that we made earlier. I'm hoping that when I add that material on the Substance Painter, it will also just add it to all of these and I want them to be plastic as well. So I thought putting it all on one map would just be fitting. And of course, the other group is everything else in the scene. So all of the inside objects and that's just those inside pieces as well as the hose, the little cap and the sticker. And I had a lot of UV room to work with. To be honest, this could have easily fit onto one map. I have all this extra space that I could have utilized so I feel like I wasted a little bit of room but like I said it's not being used in a video game or anything so two textures will be fine. Alright so that's how I prepared the model now let's export this so we can jump into Substance Painter and like I mentioned earlier the whole texturing process is going to be a little bit more real time so I can show you step by step how I prepared the texture. Alright so now jumping over to Substance Painter we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. And once that's loaded in and everything is looking good, we can go ahead and bake out those textures. So I'm going to go up to Mode, Bake Mesh Maps. I'm going to change my output size to 4K and check on that Use Low Poly Mesh as High Poly Mesh since we only have one mesh to work with. And then I can go ahead and bake out those textures. So usually if we want to see transparency in any material, we tend to have to change our shader setting to Alpha Blending and add an Opacity Channel to our texture set. That way we can make that object more transparent so we can see through it. So I thought for this week we would approach it a little bit differently and take advantage of Substance Painter's refraction. If you take a look online at different water guns, some are very transparent, you can see basically completely through it, and some are more foggy and more opaque looking. And I didn't really know which direction I wanted to go, but I definitely wanted to change it up rather than just make it simply transparent and adding some grunge on top of it. I thought we could make some refraction like it's the plastic's kind of warpy so you can kind of like barely see through it, but you can. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to play around with the refraction setting and just basically approach this model differently than we usually do. So that being said, let's jump into it. So we're going to start off with the first texture in our texture set list, which is the body. 
Now, I was following this reference photo, which is basically transparent, it's light green. I thought we would basically continue following this whole theme and make it similar to this. So if you go up here to the shader settings, you'll see that there's, like I mentioned earlier, we usually change the alpha blending. Now we're gonna leave this in, we're actually gonna switch this to PBR Metal Rough instead of alpha blending. And if you go up to this little renderer into the eye array to see what it looks like, you'll see if we go back to those shader settings, now we have this refraction available and IOR and absorption, and we're gonna take advantage of all of this. So simply if you drag it forward, you can see it kind of becomes transparent. And you know, you can play around with these settings to get something that you're happy with. So what we're gonna do before we start doing that is jump back into the editor and we can start building up this texture. So we need to start with some color. So I'll just remove this layer. We can start with a fill layer and we can go change our color to something more green, similar to our color. Now, the interesting thing that you need to know with this whole refraction is the lighter the color is, the more see-through it's gonna be, and the darker the color is, the more opaque. So if you want something looking really dark, it's gonna be basically not as transparent. So let's just start somewhere random so we can start filling it in and seeing what it look, basically looks like. So let's do that, jump into the renderer. We're gonna have to jump back and forth a little bit to get it looking however we want it to look like. Let's remove the ground. And it's already looking pretty cool. So let's open up this setting and let's just play around with these a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just drag down this IOR a little. I want it to be transparent. I wanna see that hose, that little line that we have going through to the top. And let's drag down this refraction to maybe like 0.9 a little bit more opaque. All right, so now let's jump back into the editor and we can just basically remove all these channels. We only want the color. All right, so now let's add another fill layer and we can add a little bit of roughness to it. So let's change off all those, turn them off, the channels, except for roughness. And let's go into our textures and we can go find some cool texture to add some roughness, some detail onto this material. So I'm gonna look for a grunge. I know there's some really cool, like this one, the grunge leak large. Let's try this, drag it onto the rough. And what we're going to do, so you can kind of see it is, it's looking a little bit large. Let's just drag this down to around 11 maybe. Let's just jump into the render to see how it's looking. So you can't really tell right now. And let's play around with this. Let's drag it up a little bit. And maybe I can write it's a little bit lower. Play around with this material a tiny bit. So let's go back, open those shader settings. What we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna drag up this absorption all the way. And let's just play around with these until we find something we're happy with. So as you can see, if I drag this refraction all the way down, it's gonna look really opaque, like kind of like a hard plastic. And the more we drag that slider up, it's gonna make it kind of transparent. And you see that refraction, that weirdness that's happening behind. And I actually like that pretty high. That looks pretty cool. So I think that works for now. Let's just keep it like that. And let's jump back. So what we're gonna start doing is just filling in some of these other meshes so we can see those inside objects a little bit more. So before we start adding some more detail to this, let's just jump over to our insides texture. I'm basically gonna go with the same colors that we have in our reference photo. So I'm just gonna go to these smart materials and I can start just filling on some simple plastics like this plastic glossy. Now I don't want the bump that comes with it, so let's open it and turn off the fill layer so it's nice and smooth. And we can turn this to a nice bright red. Change it to a black mask and let's go to mesh fill and we can just fill in the handle and this top little plug. So I want those red. Now for the inside, I want those to be like a darker color. I'm not really sure exactly. I kind of like how this is white. So let's add another plastic. I can turn off that fill layer. Turn it to a black mask just like we did. 
Let's assign this to that middle piece and let's change that to more of a white color. And then finally for the other plastic pieces, I want those to be just a simple black. So let's go ahead and just change this to a black color. Black mask and let's fill in these ones. Perfect. And you know what, I also want the tip of the gun to be red, that would be kind of cool. So let's just add it, we can always change it later on. And finally we just have this other one here, this clear tube. So what we're gonna do for this one is just add a fill layer. I'm gonna turn off all of those and just make the color nice and bright. Because we're using our refraction, it's gonna actually make it a little transparent. And you'll see that in a second. All right, so finally, the last little object in this, oh, let's add that to a black mask first, is just gonna be this smiley sticker. So what I'm gonna do is actually use the white that we have down here, and I can assign it to the sticker. And I just grabbed a random smiley face that I found online on Google. So we're gonna drag that in as a texture to the current session. And using this, we'll call it smile. We can go over to our projection tool. I can go down and drag this smiley face onto the base color. And we can just draw on a smiley. Because a water gun is pretty fitting having a smiley face. Maybe we'll pull it up, something like this. And let's make it rough. Actually, let's make it shiny. Awesome, we have a smiley face. So now we can jump back into our render and see how it's all looking. Now, of course, it's gonna be, you're gonna see that refraction everywhere on all the objects, which is kind of cool on this trigger. But what we're gonna do is just render out two because I'm just doing this for like a still shot. We can actually just make this a little more opaque. So basically the handle, the trigger itself and the sticker are going to be like this, a little bit more solid. And then we'll have the main green part look something like so. All right, so I think we just need to add a bit more detail. I don't know about you guys, but it's looking just a tiny bit plain. So let's jump back into the renderer. And let's start adding some tiny detail to our object. So let's go back to the body. And what I'm gonna do is start by adding some detail on the handle. So let's add another fill layer. Let's turn off all of them except for the height channel. And I'm gonna drag that up just a tiny bit. Now, displacement is checked on, so I'm gonna show you something really quick. So, if for some reason I dragged on, let's find a cool pattern for the handle. So maybe something like this tile generator, that will probably work. And I drag it on, you're gonna see it just like completely blows up, which kind of looks cool actually, but it's obviously not acting properly and we need to turn off our displacement. So let's disable that. And now it's working properly. We can bring that tiling down to how big we want our texture to be on our handle. And then let's go ahead and start just tweaking some of these. So basically you can make it blend in a little bit more, which is kind of nice. And actually we can, we can mess around with this after. So change that to a black mask we are going to go to our brushes. I'm gonna choose just a basic soft and we can start drawing in basically wherever we imagine that handle to go. And let's fill it in. I'm doing this with my mouse, so bear with me. But I think you get the idea. Maybe we can just drag this out just a tiny bit more on the front, something like that. Now it's obviously bumped out a little bit too much. So let's jump out to here and we can basically mess around with some of these settings. So the pattern, basically like how big do you want the pattern to be? Let's leave all that. Let's Is it the position, there we go. So this is the one we want. See how it's sticking up a little bit too high? So we can just drag down that position to make it sit a little bit more flush with the body. And then we can obviously play around with how big we want the, uh, the size to be. 
Now I want them to be a little bit, let's go back down to, where is it? There's just so many settings, so it really depends on how you want it to look. But let's jump back into the renderer. And you can kind of get an idea of what we're trying to do. So let's just go back and let's just erase. I think it's just a little bit too much. So maybe using that soft brush, we can cut this back a bit. Now using like a stylus on like a, would be a little bit easier, but on like a tablet would probably be easier, but we're just gonna use this. Cool, that looks nice. And we can obviously customize this as we go. So I actually don't like what I did there. So I'm just gonna repeat the front and we can just take some off the bottom. And let's do the same to this side. And once again, apologize for my mouse. I'm sure you guys will be able to do a better job, but we're gonna do this quickly. And that looks good. Doesn't need to be perfect. So now if we jump into that renderer, you can see we're getting that cool pattern into the plastic and that looks nice. But to be honest, it's not done yet. And as you can see, it's looking, I think it just needs to be a little bit more, actually, let's see, maybe it needs to be a little bit more transparent. So let's go back to our green. And like I said, the lighter the color is, the more transparent it's gonna be. So let's jump back, make the brighter green and you can see through it a little bit more. I like you can see the hose and some of these objects, that looks nice. So next up, we're actually going to add just a tiny bit more detail. So I'm gonna add another, let's call this handle detail. And this will be, do the exact same thing, turn off all the channels except for height. Let's add that to a black mask. And let's just add a tiny bit of bump. And let's just using that soft brush, maybe we can add a bit more detail to our gun. Now, to be honest, if you add this into the geometry or you really don't, actually, I'm gonna show you why I didn't have to do this little shape in geometry. Let me show you, because this bump is gonna look almost the exact same. So maybe we'll do something like this. What do you think? If I jump into the renderer, you can see we're going to, you can barely see it. So let's jump back. Bring that height slider up a lot. And you can start seeing that geometry, very similar to this. Obviously it's not that bumpy right now. So let's go back and maybe we can increase that even more. You're getting some nice detail. So, or at least some better, I don't know, slightly more interesting. But what we can do is just cut this back. I kind of want it to match the row, the line. That could be kind of cool. Something like that, maybe, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. We're just winging this, but that looks nice. It adds a little bit of shape. Now you can keep going and get pretty crazy. So let's just add one more. Maybe we want something here just to make it more, more interesting. If you look online at a lot of uh, guns, like a lot of these um, water guns, you're gonna see that there's lots of random shapes and bumps in them just to make them like interesting to look at. And you can honestly just add your own wherever you'd like. I think that's good for now. Let's just move on. We can add a few extra things. Now, of course, we need to do this side. Let's see where we started. We kind of started at the curve and went to the line. So maybe we do something like, let's not forget about our little stripes here. So we have basically just going down the side, starting at the, roughly the tip. Doesn't need to be perfect. What we could do if it was really bothering you and you wanted to make it exact, so you could just make it transparent so you can see through and then line them up or something like that. Nope. Let's go to our eraser and we can erase that line. This one kind of goes up more like that. I think that's good. All right, so one extra thing we are gonna do, we're gonna do a couple more little bumps and details. So let's go, this can be um, detail. Let's add another fill layer. 
do the exact same thing. And I just want these to be different heights. That's why I'm separating them. And this will be um, circles and name writing. So for this one, we're gonna do the same thing, but what I'm gonna do is actually go down to the textures and let's find a nice little circle shape like this coffee circle. This will work. So that do a black mask. And if you look at the reference, what I really like are those little circles. Basically, a lot of these plastic pieces have those tiny circles that kind of bump out of the, of the plastic. I guess like how they're manufactured. I'm not exactly sure the purpose of them, but they are there. And I like that small detail. So let's go through and we can add a few of these circles. I like how they're kind of all over the place a bit. Here, here. Just add that detail. Now, of course, it's not going to be perfect because we're winging this. And if you take your time a little bit more, you can actually like position these to more accurately to how they are in real life. But regardless, it's gonna help that detail. And what we're also going to do on the same layer is go down to the textures. We are going to go to one of these fonts. So let's go maybe this thin one and let's switch that to bold. And it was most likely made in China. So we're gonna add that text here as well. That's cool. Now what we can do is just, I don't want, just sitting a little bit close. So we can go back to this circle. make it the same size. We can add them a little further in the corners. Cool, let's jump into the renderer and see. So that's nice, definitely adds a bit more detail, especially to the plastic. It looks way more plasticky in a sense, a little bit too bright and shiny, so we can play around with that refraction. So what we can do is just drag that maybe down a tiny bit, depending on. Obviously, depending on how you want it to look, but maybe a little more, less metally, more plasticky is good. Something like that. I like that. That looks nice. So let's add some more details. Now I don't like how this roughness, it looks still looks too clean. And so what we're gonna do is jump back. And this we are going to increase a lot. We're getting a bit better. Let's just switch this render. So we have panorama, let's go to like studio. I like this one. Yeah, that looks better. Now we can start seeing that roughness that we had on, which is really nice, but now it's almost too rough. So let's jump back and let's drag this back up to maybe 1.9. A little more. Yeah, something like that. And then we can jump back. Let's go drag this a little bit, maybe a bit smaller. Now it's a little bit too much, so let's just drag there. This maybe way down to like 0.4. Maybe that's too much. So you can just play around with these, obviously, kind of keep going back until you find like a happy medium or something that you're happy with. Now let's just play around with these so as you can see, it's going to change the warpness of how it looks, but I like seeing those inside. I like seeing the insides and I want this little hose to be viewable because I think it looks cool. So let's kind of go something like here. I think that works. Maybe a bit less. Just a tiny bit. It really depends on what look you're going for, but I also like having that warpness on the top so it looks like it's kind of, you know, transparent a bit. 
and as you can see the more I slide this up the more like um, glass like in a way it's getting but I, it still looks plasticky so that's good anyways that looks great let's add a tiny bit more detail so what we can do is jump back into this and let's add maybe another little uh, another roughness so what we can do for this one, let's set that to a black mask and let's go down to these fingerprints. Maybe it'll be cool adding a couple of small fingerprints as if someone's touching it or kids from picking it up and handling the gun. All right, where is a finger? We don't want a whole hand. Yeah, I want some of these thumbs or a finger. So what I can do is just like, let's just paste one on, let's Paste one on here. Maybe we can change the thumbprint to like a thumbprint on the back. See if you can see them. So you can see one there. Yeah, the fingerprints are cool. Maybe what we can do is let's go back. This one was a little bit too dark. So we can just, honestly, if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can just do it like this. See, like all those thumbprints I made. Not good. So let's just erase that and let's start adding some other ones. Maybe one that's a little more crooked. Oh. And maybe we add one like here. For the material we can go back up to the renderer you see those tiny fingerprints that's kind of fun and there's lots you can do we can write details but you kind of get the idea and look how quick we textured it it was like no time so this is actually a big reason why i wanted to do it real time so you can see exactly what i did it's all just messing around with this refraction and there's a lot of fun stuff you can do you can actually go back in open this and the absorption color. So rather than maybe a green, um, you want it a little bit more opaque. So you can just kind of drag this down a bit. See, so you're kind of getting it more reflective on the outsides, depending on how much you want. So you have tons of control with how transparent you want it, but I kind of like it really bright. I think that's kind of cool. Maybe like a tad down. Something like that? I don't know so hard making decisions. I hate making decisions, but. Maybe we'll go 9.4, it's like a tad more. Anyways, you can play around with these settings. And what I'm going to do is basically just render out um, two images. So I'm gonna render out one that's like this, and then I'm also going to render one out that is all the way down. Now, I just quickly did this and I didn't spend any time trying to look into it. Now there must be a way to add refract refraction onto specific objects. So if you know, let me know in the comments because I would love to make this more opaque like how it's looking in the sticker and then have that not affect everything in the scene. So what I'm going to do for these final renders is sim simply just do two renders. I'm going to do one solid and one that has a refraction way up like we just had it. And then I can just in Photoshop just overlay the solid parts and it'll look cool. I'm gonna do all this texturing now. It looks way too glass-like, so we can play around with that refraction depending on you know how see-through you want it. Because I don't think we want it looking like glass, but I think you guys get the idea. But that's basically everything. That is the whole 3D modeling and texturing process that I did to create this small little water gun. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. And as always. A big shout out to all of my patrons for all of the continuous support. And if you want access to this 3D model or any of the working files, all of that will be uploaded to my Patreon page, which you can find in the link in the description below. Oh yeah, and I also started a Discord server. So if you're interested in being part of the community and you want to jump on and say hello, the link will be also in the description. All right, thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you guys in the next one.